welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today. So get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Right, so welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, and today... I am pleased to have on board Barbara Smith from Home Education Foundation. I thought it was a good time to bring up home education because um, at this point of recording, it is the first week back for a lot of school kids. Um, Some may have started earlier, but this is after eight or nine weeks of lockdown where kids have been at home, parents have been at home, and people have been figuring out education, how it works in the home during that time, because it is a lot different to just having summer holidays. And Barbara is the perfect person to have <laughs> on this. <laughs> I'm bigging you up here, Barbara, because she's been doing this. She's been in the home education sphere from grassroots ground level, building it up for 40 years since 1980 when your first child was born is that right yes and her along with her late husband craig has just built this enormous entity to help so many people around new zealand get all the help that they need when learning and how to homeschool their children so i think there's no better way to explain it than letting barbara explain it for herself. So welcome, Barbara. I look forward to hearing your story. Thank you. So how did you get into homeschooling? Was it something you always considered? No, it wasn't. Didn't think about it. We started, the first time we started to think about it was when I was pregnant in 1980 with my oldest. Mm -hmm. We were at a um, instruction class, the birthing class, and the instructor said, your children will grow up in spite of you. And we thought, hmm, we looked at each other. We don't want our children growing up in spite of us. <laughs> we want yeah. to have some influence in their lives. And that was the beginning to start for us. And we looked at putting our children into a Christian school. There were no Christian schools in Palmerston North. Mm-hmm. So we became part of a group of people to set up the school. When the time came for the school to start, um, the chairman went around everybody, well, how many children, you, 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 and he found that only half of the people were going to start, put their children in school, because we'd all, all started the year before homeschooling, um, right. doing um, a, a program, ACE, Accelerated Christian Education, which was an, a school, a Christian school had, uh, was helping us to do it at home, so we were the beginning of that at home, or five couples started doing it. Well, we didn't last there. We, we lasted with AC for about two years and then we branched out. But it was um, the fact that there was nothing there that we want. We didn't want our children going to the state school. There was nowhere else. We had nothing else to do but to homeschool. But there was nothing. All we got, there was no curriculum out there for homeschoolers. There was no support. Everybody's negative. What about socialization? You'll ruin your children, all that kind of stuff. We had nobody there. To, who'd gone before us, even in the States. It really only started to snowball in the States as well in 1983. So mm-hmm. it was really just the beginning. There was a, a interview between Dr. Moore and um, uh, Dr. Dobson, and that's what started it in the States. But um, yeah, we, once, we, once we started, we just knew that that's what we wanted to do. And we we, yeah, so it was a no-brainer once we started. There was no way we were going to see them at school. We loved it so much. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's... I was just thinking about how you mentioned people in the States. How, how did you learn about the people in the States? Was it through communities that you already had, that you had these people? Because it was before Google. Yeah. We didn't learn that. about the people. No, we were well on the way before we learned about people in the States. We were, we were just in New Zealand because we didn't have the internet in those no. days. Nothing. No. So, <laughs> yeah, we were on our own. We didn't know about these people. We didn't know what was happening over there. But we knew in the group of 
families in New Zealand. We knew what we wanted, and so we went for it. And we just gradually started realizing, hey, there's other things we can be doing. We don't have to stick to um, what we were started out with. In actual fact, our exemption, when we applied, there were less than 100 people, 100 children being home educated in New Zealand. That was in 1986, because wow. it's compulsory to have your children in school from the ages of six to 16. So you have to get an exemption during that time if, you do, if you're not gonna have your children in school. And so all we had to do was send a letter to the, the um, uh, principal of the local school to say that we wouldn't be sending our children there. It was like a quarter page letter. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then we started homeschooling, officially. So, um, but it, the, it, now it's a quite a, you know, several pages of filling in, but there's a lot of people around New Zealand who are willing to help anybody who wants to fill out an exemption form. So um, yes. and there's one lady in particular who uh, is very good at it and is helping a lot of people getting exemptions at the moment. But what's happening right now, we don't say that we're home educating. Um, at the moment, we're all isolating, educating. <laughs> yes, and there is a difference. Absolutely. Yes. So, so, so for those out there who are now, uh, who, who have been educating their children at home, may have got their children back at school now, or grappling with whether to homeschool or not, um, it's, uh, it's, it's different for all of us, but it's now will be, things are starting to open up where we can meet with others, have, uh, go to the gym, have music lessons, do all different things. Um, and that's what homeschooling is all about. Most of it doesn't, a lot of it doesn't happen at the home. A lot of it happens at yes. sport group meetings, at uh, clubs, um, sporting events, you know, all these different things. And that's what everybody, we're all missing that at the moment. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's important to, to clarify because I know when lockdown started and a lot of people trying to figure out how to educate their children at home and going, Oh look, now we're all like the homeschoolers, but homeschooling is about going out and learning all these new things about the world around. It's not just sitting in and reading a book. It's, That's right. mm. it's so much more than that. And there's so much more that other people can give to our children. If it was just me educating my children, boy, <laughs> they wouldn't get a very good education. <laughs> But because there's all these other people out there that they can learn from, um, it's, it's wonderful. We need to, need to, you know, I'm the primary carer, but we need to be um, taking the opportunity of meeting up with other people. So I think one of our greatest tools when we're homeschooling is our dinner table, showing hospital, hospitality to people and then letting the children learn from the different guests that you have around the table. It's exciting. So, yeah. I never really thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I'm thinking about the idea of the socialization aspect and the things to consider when, when people think of homeschooling. And there are so many groups now on Facebook and so many activities and outings. And I always thought it was something that you had to sign your kids up to do and take them somewhere and take them to do this. I never considered the opposite of bringing people in. Mm, yeah, well, we, you, children don't need other children to learn how to be children, but they need to be around adults to learn to be an adult. So if we've got people coming in, and one, one of the things about homeschool is they learn to relate across the board. They'll relate, they'll, they'll be good um, relationships with younger children and good relationships with older and much older people. Um, you go to a camp, I, I was really impressed at some of the camps they've been to, and you'd see these teenage boys going off to go on some adventure, and most of them have got a little sibling on their hip. <laughs> they're, not, they're not embarrassed to be doing that sort of thing, which is really neat. And it's really good to see children going and talking to older people and not being afraid to do that, and, and they can learn such a lot doing that. There was one person um, who... Uh, talked about one of the um, things that they did. They had their children do some baking, and then they went and visited this immigrant from um, Germany, an older lady or family yep. couple, and they took her the baking, and they went and they did some yard work for her, 
And then after the advert, they had this tape recorder while they were having a cup of coffee together. They recorded her and they asked her, what was it like living in Germany during the time she was there? What was it like moving from Germany to New Zealand? So there was their history lesson, all in one. So, <laughs> and geography as well. And geography. And that covers Dr. Moore. I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Moore. He's, a, well, he's, he's passed on now, but he's um, had quite an influence in the homeschooling movement. He said that there's three things to focus on. Um, uh, let me just... Is that Dr. Moore, M-O-R-E or M-O-O-R-E? M-O-O-R-E, I think. Oh, no-E. Yeah, no-E, I don't think. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to confirm that with you. That's okay. Said, there's three things to focus on. Um, work, service, and academics. So the, with, with that example, the children were doing work in the garden, and they'd made the baking, they, um, they did well, the service that was uh, in the garden as well, and then the academics is when they were having their cup of coffee. <laughs> but we want to we want to train up children who are well balanced, and if we just mm. focus on the academics, we're missing out a lot for them. So we've got to think, okay, work, service, and academics is a good way to try and have a well rounded child. Yeah, uh, because that's what we do as adults. Hmm. We when we I mean we do go to work. And do that but we have so many things so many life skills that we need to learn and need to be able to do yeah. that often you don't get that when it's a structured up school home bed yeah. and homework it's there's not much to do apart from at the weekends to yeah. really explore and then yeah it's one of the th one of the things we've been noticing is um coming up on the Facebook, especially this week when people are really, the rubber hits the road about, do I send my children to school or not? Is the comments they've been making, you know, when, the, when their books came home from school, I was surprised at how much they've been doing or how much they haven't learned in the term. And the time that I've had with them, the children have learned as much in this time as they have all, to, all year. Mm. So, children are so inquisitive as well. Yeah. yeah. If they have if they have something in front of the parents and then asking them questions and everyone's being active participants, it's more engaging. It's more, more synapses are firing and every yeah. time this, they're more inquisitive and more inclined to learn rather yeah, well, we, than read this chapter and that's it. Yeah. There's a scope and schools have a scope and sequence. Yes. Well, home, homeschoolers do too. And the, hope, the, the, the scope and sequence for homeschoolers is one word one word <laughs> and it's why and the yeah. children will fill in it's like a jigsaw puzzle we can try and boringly give the children a whole lot of work to do mm. um we've got to do it and often they're not necessarily learning while they're filling in the gaps of doing stuff but when they ask their why questions they'll be filling in their own gaps in fact yeah. i want to i want to let people who are feeling insecure about homeschooling i've got a couple of um stories to tell oh yes please do one one is um uh this lady that they wanted to find out who learned more in ece you know early childhood education is it the um or early school it might have been kindergarten um or the first grades but they took this one person from a really prestigious a girl from a really prestigious school and they took a girl in California who was a Mexican immigrant and they followed them both around all day to see who was learning the most. And you know who they came up with was learning the most? Who? The Mexican immigrant girl who they thought was the least advantaged. And the reason was she was following around her mum all day saying, why? Mum, why this? Mum, why that? And the mum's talking to her and answering her questions all the way. And then... Um, but the ones at school, the teacher was asking the why questions. So um, then the children aren't as interested in those questions. <laughs> no, um, the children are interested in what they're interested in. And then the teacher asks the question, they go, I don't care about that. Why should I? Yeah. I'm not ready to learn that. So as homeschoolers, we can extend. And, and so there's also research out there that says, what age group do children learn the most? Are, are they the best at learning in? 
you know, I can walk to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, whatever. And the one that comes up consistently is the naught to five age group. And my theory there is that up until five, roughly, the children are asking the why questions, and then after five, they go to school, and then the teacher's asking the why. And I think that's one of the major reasons why there's a difference. So yeah. I reckon we can extend that atmosphere until the children are 10, 12, and they're ready to be doing their own, a lot of their own study. I mean, we don't stop, but we can always be doing it, but encouraging the children to keep asking the why questions. Yeah. So, if we can do that, my, my, one of my things that I've held on to with homeschooling is, this is my theme. Um, this, is, this is a George Simmel, he's a German philosopher, this is what he said once. He is educated who knows how to find out what he doesn't know. So I see that as my role as a homeschooling mum, is to help my children, because there's so much information out there, there's no way we can teach them everything, we don't know everything. No. There's no way. So my role is to help him to know how to find out what he doesn't know. And so it doesn't matter what my level of education is. I just have to go around answering their why questions. And if I don't know the answer, I go somewhere, take them with me to find out the answer, whether we go to a book or the internet or however, but have them involved in that process and that, that's a process of them learning how to find out what they don't know. Now, many years ago, we had this mum contact us, mm -hmm. and she um, said, I can't get an exemption. The, the MOE is failing me for the exemption. We said, why? They said, oh, well, I'm illiterate, and so they're not going to let me um, homeschool. We said, look, this isn't a problem. We took on this challenge. <laughs> and uh, so we um, um, found out that she was illiterate, so we, Craig helped her fill out her exemption. My husband helped her fill out her exemption form. And we pointed out very clearly that why was she illiterate? She went to school. She, was, she, went, she did her whole time in school and came out illiterate. So she, we said that she didn't want her child to go to school and be illiterate. <laughs> and we showed in the exemption how she would be able to learn along with her child. Yeah. And she got her exemption. And she did it excellently, and she became educated herself. Because I think that a lot of the one of the ways one of the, one of the things um, is a, a question that people have is how do I motivate my children? Well, when we are learning alongside our children, that's a motivation for our children. We're all excited about it. We're reading a book together, and and we're all excited about what we're learning in the book. The children catch our enthusiasm as well. And so it's, um, it's, it's not about having to um, <laughs> keep revving them up. It's if we yeah. can show the enthusiasm ourselves as well. Um, I think one of the things we can do to help ourselves is to set goals for ourselves of what we're wanting to be achieving. And so for, for me, because we can get caught up and some days you can get through the day and you think, well, what do we do today? <laughs> so I like yeah. that goals that I'm that I'm interested in and that I'm wanting to see with the children and I always start with my number one goal now I'm a believer so my one is having family devotions with the children um, and so if you're not you know it's, it's finding out what your what your number one thing is and my second one is reading to the children I think it's really good to read to them a lot in a day um, yeah. I, 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 I've been, I, I, I used to say to read for two hours a day <laughs> and right. next time I come to an area after saying that people would say oh, I can't read for two hours a day my throat gets sore I get fidgety <laughs> I said no read read to the children in, in bits and pieces throughout the day um, so you while they're doing the dishes while they're hanging the washing out while they're playing with the Lego while they're coloring in while they're brushing my hair while they're messing with my feet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that one. Yeah, yeah. So it's just off and on. And I might have several books on the go. I might have one that I'm reading to all the children. Well, this is where it used to be. Right now, I've only got one child that I'm still homeschooling, and she's 14. So I read to her a little bit, but not as much as we used to. Yeah. But um, I'd have one that I might read to all the children, or just the ones that are doing the dishes, or just the boys, or just the girls, or the, just the older ones, or just the younger ones. But... 
when I'm reading to the older ones, I would always have the younger ones there too because they, if it was possible, because they, um, they're taking in an awful lot at the same time. And it's, it's a pre that, that they might not be understanding what the reading is, but there's a lot of other stuff going on that they are mixing and taking in on. Um, yeah. so, so I think reading is a really important thing. When our two oldest, they were heading off to the States and Craig said to them, uh, for two, for two uh, years, they were going off for two years. And so we, um, Craig said, look, in this next month before you go, what would you like to do as a family that we could all do together? He never mentioned the money or anything like that. He just said, what would you like to do? And they said, read every night together as a family. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was oh, that's lovely. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. But our children can learn a lot from us just reading, reading books, giving the children a love of books. So when I look at academics, um, yes. I, I put it into two baskets. Mm -hmm. One basket is the three R's, reading, writing, and the arithmetic. Those are things we have to help our, mostly have to help our children with. I've had children who've learned to read by themselves just yep. with me doing stuff with older siblings and whatever else, and, I've learned, and you come to them and they, oh, look, you're already reading. <laughs> but um, that's a blessing. Um, a lot of it is kind of monkey see, monkey do, isn't it? They, <laughs> they want to emulate the older children, emulate yes. the world around them. Yes, yes. So those are three things. Those are things that we need to make sure that we cover with our children. Whatever, whatever curriculum we're using um, or not using, because unschooling is a, 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 um, a lot of people are doing that, um, but whatever we're doing, those are three things that um, either the children will eventually come across themselves or we might want to have more input. But those are things we need to make sure that our children at some stage learn. Now, I don't think that it needs to be at a young age. Some children don't learn to read until they're 10 or 12. And, that, and that's you, often boys. But that's not a problem. If we're already reading to the children, then that's not a problem because they're still they're learning stuff as they go along and then everything else is in another basket because they're they're all things that will come from the reading and writing that they've learned and the arithmetic that they've learned so so i see that there's things that we can be a lot more um we can do together like if you've got a big family how do i cope teaching children of all different ages well if you're using yeah. a set curriculum and they're all doing different things yes that's hard work or you'll go but, bonkers Yes, but if you can pull out a book and read it that goes right across all the ages and you're expecting different things from different children, then that is so much easier. We need to set our, sim our homeschooling up so that we can succeed. So the thing is to keep it simple so that we can succeed and do it in the long run. You know, I've been homeschooling, for, I've been um, at it since, for 40 years because my, my youngest is, my oldest is now 40. Yeah, and I didn't send her to preschool, so she's been with you know been been from day one, day one, and um, so for forty years, that's a big part of my life. It's had to become part of my lifestyle. I've had to incorporate everything into my life, and not have this compartment that's school. So for us, learning is a twenty-four hour process. Um, yeah. Although sleep is a good part of that, <laughs> but it's. It's looking at everything that we're doing and seeing, um, uh, and, but it's too strenuous if you're trying to turn everything into a teachable moment, but yeah. it's just taking it in your stride and, saying, and seeing how you can learn. And so one of the easiest things to help us to do better is, um, and to be able to achieve it in a more relaxed way is to be reading aloud to the children. Um, so you can cover a lot. Now, I think um, relax relaxing a lot so to be taking it simple and relaxing um i've got lots of stories about children who are don't boys in particular don't learn to read until they're 10 or 12. um that's uh, quite interesting so i imagine a lot of parents might be a bit stressed about that. yes and they're not to be stressed now we had an ero review when jeremiah was about 10 or 11 and so um rob williamson the ero at the time he came in and I thought, and we, we always do our reviews at a different place. So we were at a hall and, he came, and we had set stuff up that they were doing on tables. 
And before we went, Jeremiah desperately wanted to go to the library. No, he's not a reader, right? He wanted to go to the library and get some books out. And I thought, I, he kept bugging me about this. So finally, I go to the library, we get some books out, he gets them out, and he wants to bring them to the ERO review. I said, okay, well, look, just to keep him quiet, I thought, here's a table here, you put all those books out on that table. So he meticulously put all of his books out, but on certain, opened them all up, certain pages, on the table, books that we'd only just got out of the library the day before, and I'd put his books here. This is some writing he did when he was five. Okay, and, okay, and I've got no more writing, <laughs> because he wasn't yeah. writing, because he wasn't reading, but I had this stuff here. Look, it was just a struggle to get him to write, struggle to get him to read, and all that, but I'd read to him heaps. Mm. So I'm going through this with Rob Williamson. Well, when he walks through the door, I said, look, we're doing this review, but Jeremiah doesn't know how to read. He's 10 and, or 11, and he doesn't know how to read. But, you know, I'll show you what we've been doing with him. So I showed him the things I've been doing, that we've done, and all that. Then he went over and he spent more time at this desk that Jeremiah had all these books out on. Mm -hmm. And I thought, good night, what's going to happen now? And he asked Jeremiah questions about all these pages that were open, and he answered all these questions about all these pages on these books that we'd only got out of the library the day before, but of course, we've had all sorts of other books out yeah. and that he's looked at. So he knew the planes that he was looking at and all that. And he had quite a conversation with Rob Williamson. And we passed our review with flying colours, with no writing. And he knew that he couldn't read. And yet he was telling him all the stuff about the things in the books. <laughs> That's fascinating. And yeah. he eventually did learn how to read, didn't he? Well, he did. Yes, he yeah. did. Absolutely. He learned to read because and write because he wanted to write to the... Um, Prime Minister and tell the Prime Minister to, to uh, that he knew where um, Osama Bin Laden was and he wanted to write to the head person in the Air Force or something like that and ask for the F-16s to be brought back and that was the motivation to start him reading and writing when he was 10 or 11 and he can read really well now um, and another person um, uh, that I know didn't learn to read until he was 10 and then by the time he was 16 he had read all the Lord of the Rings and Cimmerillion. Now not many people have read Cimmerillion, that's really hard to read. No. So um, it's, well, it's, it's not a matter of even catching up, they suddenly have it. Um, mm. they, they, they can't do it and they know how to do it and they've suddenly got it and off they go. If we've done the groundwork of reading to them, giving them a love of seeing us loving reading and them reading, it, it's, it, um, it happens. So I want people to relax and enjoy their children. The key thing is to enjoy your children, enjoy learning with them and keeping it simple <laughs> so, that yeah. it's, so it's achievable. And then the rest just falls into place. But heaps of people like... Um, Jeff Richardson from Manus University, he said, the evidence shows overwhelmingly that homeschooled children perform extremely well, above average, when they re-enter formal education. That appears to be across the board, whether they sat at home and had formal lessons, or whether they were upper tree hippies who had no formal learning pattern. On any measure you like, socially or academically, they will do better. So I love that, upper tree hippies. Yeah, oh, and then there's another, there's another guy, Ronald Meehan. He yeah. wrote an article. I sent this article to you if you want to put that up with the podcast. Oh, yes, I'll add that to the show notes. Yeah. Home based education, not does it work, but why does it work so well? He wrote this article because he wanted to write a really good article about what, why homeschooling does not work, why it will ruin your children, why it's not a good thing to do at all. But he did his homework, he visited a lot of families, he found out what it was about, and he, then he wrote this article because he just fell in love with homeschooling. And he says, this study challenges the almost universally held view that children of school age need to be formally taught if they are, in, if they are to learn. In school, this may be the case, but at home, they can learn just by living. So well, yeah, that is it. There's, I know, I know adults who go, they reach their after school ages. So like I knew someone who was 40 and there were opportunities of learning and doing extra education for work. And 
I've done my learning. Yeah, no. I've done my I've done my time at school. I don't want to go back to school. I'm thinking, but you but you're always learning. Yes. You're always learning. It's so yeah. stifling and restricting to be of that mindset. And I like how you've mentioned about the them being able to reintegrate into higher education later on because I know that is probably a concern. It's something that I've considered because in the future, I do want to homeschool our children when we have them. Yeah. That making sure that they do have their reading, writing and arithmetic and that they can go forward into higher education universities and getting those jobs and having successful lives. So homeschoolers across the board are doing really well, getting to the university, getting into um, different uh, courses, um, uh, different, like our son got into uh, the Air Force, avionics. Okay. Avionics. And he didn't have any exams, and most homeschoolers don't have exams. So he had to sit this test, and 10 questions in the test were compulsory, absolutely compulsory. You had to get the whole 10, and then you had to have a reasonably good score on the whole test. Well, at the end, I think, I can't remember what his overall score was, but it was good. It was very good. Yeah. But in the 10, he missed one. And you had to get 10. It was compulsory. So they said to him, have you ever done mechanics uh, in your homeschooling? And he said, no. And they said, well, you failed the mechanics component of this. (laughs) This is to become an an avionics uh, technician. Um, Anyway, so they said, but look, we like your overall score and we like the way you present yourself. So we're going to break the rules this time and let you come in. (laughs) And then his course through as they were going through it, so it was a three or four year course, his course had the highest mean, had the the highest, uh, I don't think mean average for the the whole class um, in this, since I've been keeping the the statistics. So he didn't let his class down either once he got there. Yeah. And then, um, this is another funny illustration. I had another son who did, avionics at university or some kind of avionics things at university and uh in the first he only did one year and then he went off to the states but Mm -hmm. and but he um him and another girl were doing homeschooled girl were both doing this course and they were they were getting tests back and they were getting a pluses and a's and other people in the class would go up to the lecturer and say how can we get high marks how can we lift our marks up because everybody else was down in the seas you know they weren't doing nearly as well and he said look go and see um go and see zach and um catherine they'll they'll be able to tell us them how they get higher marks both of those two are homeschooled <laughs> <laughs> that was really interesting but oh. when, when when children go into school what we find is that they're ahead in some things and behind in others because we're not doing the national curriculum. So the children will be following, a lot of times they'll be following their interests, so they'll be a way ahead. But in actual fact, because they're motivated and they're, they're, um, they, they are connected with it more, they'll quickly, once they get to school, they quickly catch up to where they need to be. So it's not a yeah. worry. We and don't they have, have more of a thirst for learning as well, don't they, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know uh, even in my education, I I went through all the standard education and me and maths do not mix. Yeah. As soon as I didn't have to do maths, it was gone. It was yeah. gone from my choices. <laughs> and yeah, I know the basics and I know how to work a calculator. And that's that's from 18 years at school. Yes. Yeah. So if you're interested and you have that interest, you're going to pick it up. If you don't have the interest, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whether you're at school or whether you're at home. Yeah. Either way, yeah, yeah, because there's plenty yes. of people at school at home that are doing really well with maths and others that aren't. So it's the same, the same. It's the same idea. everywhere. Yeah. So, but um, here at home, you can do the, what they do at school in an hour and a half. What they do in a, uh, for a week at school, you can do in an hour and a half at home. And that's been, wow. and there's all sorts of statistics. Some people have got two, two hours at home for two weeks. It's just, um, well known that you can achieve stuff so much easier at home because you don't have all those dynamics of the classroom dynamics. Mm. So um, 
You don't have one person to 30 children. Yeah, and then you know, you know your child better than any teacher will ever know your child. So you can, yeah. it's, it's um, a no-brainer when you come to helping this child because you know them so well. Yeah, and, and, and you're motivated, you're even more motivated for them to succeed. Whatever success is, it's not necessarily exams, but to be the person that you would like to see them to be. Yeah. Mm. Or that, you, that, that the child would like to be as well. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. Well, I think we've gone through every, every question <laughs> that I had down. Um, before we finish, I would like to just... Um, just clarify, because I'm not sure if I missed it. What would be the first thing that parents should consider when, they, if they want to, after listening to this glowing review of homeschooling, um, what parents consider to be the first step to get into that, um, getting that exemption? They would need to get the uh, exemption form, and it's on the Ministry of Education's um, uh, website or you can go onto our website you can find links for it on this Facebook things um, I run I moderate um, a home education in New Zealand and the New Zealand's written out in full N-E-W-Z-E-A-L-N-A-N-D so this is another one NZ uh, which I don't moderate but um, on there the two top posts one's about getting exemptions one's about getting started in homeschooling <clears throat> so those oh, are good perfect. to look at and uh, there's um, once you get onto the Facebook pages, which are great because you can get ask all sorts of questions there and get answers. And there's a lot of different Facebook pages, so I'm just saying the one that I moderate. But there's plenty there, and they're all good, right? <laughs> there's none that are any better than the other. And um, and oh, but on the on the on the home education in New Zealand written out in full, there's um, a person Cynthia Hancock's, and she's got a really good booklet. On getting on applying for an exemption, and okay. that's well well worth getting. And Cynthia, if you haven't got anybody else that can help you with your exemptions, she can help you with your exemption. She does charge a small amount, but but there's also lots of people out there who help for nothing. So, um, but I know that when when Cynthia helps people, they usually get the exemption with no extra questions being asked. But so you fill out this exemption form. And you just sit there and just take it one question at a time and don't, don't be stressed about it. Just give it the best you've got because if, if it's not good enough, they just come back and ask for more questions. So then you can clarify it, get, answering those questions and then um, and hopefully you get your exemption after the first or second lot of those questions. Now, the interesting thing about the exemption form is that it's just there to help the MOE see that you know what you're doing. So then... Um, because as soon as you start homeschooling, you don't have to do a thing that's in your exemption form. You can do whatever you like. So yeah. you're not held to what you write in your exemption form. So just relax about that <laughs> and feel yes. like you, you don't have to get it exactly right for your child. You just have to show the MOE that you know what you're talking about, that you know how to educate your child. Yes, and, and I want to clarify as well that you have to have this form. You can't just pull your kids out because that's truancy. That's right. And up until Monday, um, you could, it didn't matter. You could have your children in school, but, but once it became compulsory again on Monday, you have to have your children in school. Now, some of you say, but I don't want to put my child in school. We've just had this good time. I don't want to lose that. Well, there's ways around that. You can either get your teacher to um, give you permission, I've forgotten the term now, um, that you can um, have your child away, or you can go to your doctor and get a certificate from your doctor saying that um, this child will be better at home and not at school over the next two weeks, and then, uh, then while, you're getting, while you're getting the exemption. So you don't have to f officially send them back. You have to officially send them back, but there's ways around it by keeping them at home. Okay. Because one of the things... One of the things we recommend is when you bring your children home is not to go suddenly into a whole lot of book work, if that's the route you're going to take, mm -hmm. but, to, but to take time off one year, one month for every year your child's been at school. So if your child's been at school for three years, then three months, take three months off just to do fun things with your child, 
to wow. set in place things that you want to do. I mean, in that time, you'll be reading, and you'll be doing all sorts of things too with them. But, and, but just getting jobs around the house done, because once you've got children at home, suddenly there's a different dynamic at home. So yeah. um, working out how you're going to do that and, and just really get your relationship better again um, just by doing all these fun things and playing games and board games and cards and all that sort of thing and going for walks along the beach and smelling the flowers. <laughs> um, and then you're, then you're getting school out of your child and you're getting school out of you. Yeah. And then, then you can, okay, let's see how we can educate our children. That's why the, the um, Facebook pages, most of the Facebook pages and our, our organization, Home Education Foundation, we talk about home education rather than homeschooling. Because we're not wanting to school our children at home. School is what they set up to be able to control 30 children in a classroom. We're wanting to educate our children. In England, um, you don't have to get exemptions from schooling because it's, um, in England it's, it's education otherwise. Okay. So um, they, they, it's, it's, they, they talk about in school that the children need to be educated. But... Um, but in New Zealand, there's no the, the requirements for what they have to teach are very small. Less, they've got smaller than what they used to. Sex education is one thing they have to teach, mm -hmm. but a lot of stuff it's really interesting. It's mind blowing when you look at it and say what exactly needs to be taught in school. But there's a lot of extracurricular things that are being taught in school that a lot of us are not happy about. So. Right. Yeah. Um, so when you bring them home, you've got the freedom to teach them whatever you like, whatever you want, whatever your children want to like, to learn and like. So, um, so, so I'd say relax, and especially in that first few months, equivalent to how long they've been at school, um, really take that time to build your relationships back up to being really good. Now, a lot of people during the, the lockdown have built that, have done that. So... Um, so it'd be good not for them to lose it. So if they can find ways of not putting the children back into school while they're getting the exemption, it's good. And one of the most effective ways is to get a certificate from a doctor. The MOE recognises that, which is really good. Right. Good tips. Okay, I'm just having a look. There was one thing that... You wrote. So the the one thing that you would like to summarize. So if you could summarize all of this into maybe a couple of sentences, because it was a big a big topic. What what would you say to the people listening, if you could summarize it at all? Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's a big thing. I know it is a big thing. But <clears throat> homeschooling is wonderful for the parent and for the child. It's be, it's really good for that for your relationship, for um, for them to be able to learn what they would like to learn. You can you can um, your children will go. They can go as far as they want in whatever way they want. Now <clears throat> in school. Um, by, but the, just by the nature of school, you have to teach search children in a certain way and certain things. But in actual fact, when, it, when you really come to start to thinking about homeschooling, some of those things are not as important as um, a, a whole lot of different things. Actually, I'll, I want to share, did I, I might have sent to you, um, employers, they, they, um, a paper in Wellington asked 500 employers what they wanted, there was a survey of 500 randomly selected employers um, asked, them, they asked them what qualifications and traits they wanted to see in their employees. Mm -hmm. And so on the list, the top one that was attitude, the second one's honesty, then tidy appearance, amicability, enthusiasm, reliability. And we go right down to 20 and we haven't seen qualifications yet. Qualifications comes in at number 22. Wow. <laughs> So um, um, there's so much other things that we need to be helping our children with to become the type of adults that we want them to be, not just yeah. to drift into life. And often when they're just going through school and nobody's training the children, nobody's, nobody's got 
nobody's looking at um, the end result and where we're going, unless you've got to really motivate it. Some children just pick up on it and they know what they want and they drop, they've got to drive and they go for it. But yeah. a lot of children are just going with the flow. We, we want to help our children not go with the flow, help them to have really good personable qualities we the things we can be doing so much easier at home and oh yeah for people who've got children at school and you think i could never have my children at home all the time my goodness but the short time i have there's bickering and quarrels and whatever else it just drives me crazy good point that, yes that's because they're bringing all those attitudes of school into home and once they're home they might start keep that might be um you might see that in them for a little while, but part of that first time, you know, when I send, I say, um, uh, treat your children differently for one month, if for, uh, one month for every year that they've been at school, all those attitudes will go, and then you'll find you've got a different person, and they're not going to have those same attitudes because the socialisation is different, and yeah. there's not the same, there's not the same. Um, uh, push to be the number one or whatever it is that causes yeah. all of it. I don't know. But it's yeah, different. the hierarchy. Hierarchy, yeah. Whatever yeah, it is. Know, yeah. It's different when you're at home. And you'll you'll learn to enjoy your children so much more. Mm. And there's ways of getting time, you know, go and have a bath and then nobody else can get in the bathroom so you've got some time. <laughs> you know, there's there's ways you can find to get um uh some me me space because we need to look after ourselves as well as as homeschooling mums because we want to last the distance for however yeah. long. Not many people are 40 years like us because we've got four of our own children, three adopted children and one under guardianship that span a long time. Wow, this one, yes. This one was born in 1980 and the last one in 2005. So it's quite a long gap. But, but nonetheless, many people have got several years to go. So we, we want to, we want to not, it's not a race that we're in. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's let's enjoy our children, let's enjoy the walk and go out there and um, have fun, but at the same time be working on making all of us, including ourselves, better people. So homeschooling is not just for the children, it's also for the mum. It's mom. for the adults. <laughs> the, yeah. That's yeah. a great line to finish on. It's not just for the children, it's for the adults as well, it's for everybody. It's for everybody, everybody. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. This has been quite enlightening. I'm looking forward to sharing this. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.